Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. Can you hear my voice and see my video? Good morning, sir. Boleh, sir. Okay, so you, uh, after this, please open your webcam. Okay. Yes, sir. So we are having about in the students. I do not know how many students should be. I think it's about 15, go ahead, right? 15 or 16. Okay, so all of you are required to open your webcam so that we can uh, better to see your face eh? and then we can communicate much more better rather than seeing only my face in front of you like this. Eh? Okay, uh, the rest, I think you can open your webcam. So whoever didn't yet uh, use tudong and so on, please uh, wear your tudongs, uh, wear proper attire. Okay, yang lain, tolong buka juga webcam. This is C1 and C2, isn't it? Should be, I think, it's more than 10 people, eh? but it's already only 8. So I do not know where the others, or is it they are already shifting the class to the other group? I do not know. Uh, okay, uh, just uh, be remembered that your attendance will be recorded in two ways, where the attendance will be recorded here, if I'm not mistaken, you can see there is an attendance here. I can download the attendance here and where I can see your login time and your logout time. So I can, uh, that is the, the first way. The second way is that by you future. So at the end of the class, you have to tick the you future to uh, state that you are coming to the class. So I will check your attendance eh, in the U future as well as also the attendance in uh, in the MS team. Because sometimes there are students who are taking opportunity. They are just uh, didn't come to the classroom uh, by online. And then they only just tick the U future. So I can detect when when you are coming to the MS team. Pukul berapa masuk saya beritahu. Pukul berapa keluar pun saya beritahu melalui MS Team. So kalau I found that uh, there are students who are not attending the class, tetapi take you future, uh, that is a very criminal, apa ni, satu jenayah, satu jenayah akademik. Eh, you cubaan menipu. Eh. So please be sincere semasa bulan Ramadan ni, kita datang kelas tuntut ilmu, sebab bila kita tuntut ilmu ni, uh, kita akan lebih uh, diberkati eh, orang yang apa, mendatangi majlis ilmu, Ala orang yang mencari keberkatan dengan menggunakan ilmu. Okay, I think it's already uh, two minutes past eight. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hopefully you can hear my voice and hopefully all of you can uh, open the webcam. Okay, so uh, I will start to share my uh, lesson plan so that you can see what is going on on the subject itself. Okay, hopefully you can see my screen showing uh, the desktop full of files. And this is the lesson plan. Okay. Semua ada eh kat sini? InsyaAllah ada eh? Boleh dengar suara saya? Ada. Eh, yang seorang je yang lain tak dengar kot. Yang lain okay eh? Boleh dengar eh? Letih, letih sangat you all ni, apa ni, bercakap pun tak macam tak nak je. Boleh, boleh, boleh. Boleh eh? Okay, ada yang bilik gelap eh, Muhammad Adib gelap benar biliknya. Tak nampak apa cahaya, apa ni tak ada, tak ada elektrik eh, takkan kot eh. Uh, ni Muhammad, apa ni Ahmad, Ahmad Adib ni, tolong buka webcam. Uh, Muhammad Aiman, tolong buka webcam. Kalau webcam you rosak, you boleh gunakan phone. I have given to you a video YouTube how to use your phone as a webcam. So I don't think all of you didn't have any handphone. Mesti ada handphone ni kan? Okay, go back to our business. So uh, this is my lesson plan. And, uh, and I didn't receive your real lesson plan from UITM Pahang. 
So I'll use the 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 last semester lesson plan. So this is not final. Eh? This is only draft. So the final lesson plan will be given to you once I get the document from your item eh? OK, so this is the diploma in civil engineering where your course is ECS338, uh, Structural Concrete and Steel Design. Uh, requires three hours of lecture and one hour of tutorial. But in this semester, I found that I just only given the responsibility uh, to guide you in the lecture times and another one hour with the respective group C1 and C2 with Puan Dahlia. So, uh, di situ kita akan terpisah lah. Eh. Semasa tutorial, you dengan Puan Dahlia. Semasa lecture saja, you bersama saya. Eh. Okay, but you still get three hours of lecture and one hour for tutorial lah. And it's a three hours credit uh, uh, punya subject, meaning that it's very impactful to your CGPA. Uh, the prerequisite of this subject is ECS 248. I think this one is a structural analysis eh, in the last time. So whoever want to take this subject, you must pass your structural analysis, eh, indeterminate structures. Kalau tak pass, you tak boleh ambil subject ni eh. So kalau siapa-siapa yang masuk subjek ni without passing uh, strategies, minta drop lah eh, sebab you tak layak. Okay, okay uh, there is a, a, a new changes in your assessment uh, where your test will be 20%. Uh, last semester is a 30%, eh, but now it's being reduced by 10%. So it is 20%. And your mini project also now changed from 10% to 20%. So test and mini project will, will be considered as your carry marks, lah, 40%. So I, I think uh, these changes is good for you. Why? I hope that by having these changes, you can get a very uh, good carry marks. Lah, eh? Because sometimes uh, when the test mark is very high, you cannot get a good carry marks lah, before you enter the examination. For final exam will be the same, still 60%. Eh? Yang ni tak ada berubah. Yang berubah ni yang warna merah je. Eh? Okay. So jelas kan eh, tentang you punya assessment ni. Eh? You have test, you have mini project as your carry marks and you have also final exam. And for course outcome, there are three course outcomes. CO1, CO2, and also CO3. Okay, so we uh, investigate one by one. What is cost outcome number one of this subject? You are required to analyze reinforced concrete and steel sections with respect to the relevant standards. So when you see the word analyze here, meaning that you have to remember your structural analysis subject because you want to perform analysis. So that's why this subject is a prerequisite. Eh, sorry, this subject is prerequisite. Eh, the indeterminate structures. So maksudnya, you cannot uh, forget about structural analysis. And after that, CO2, after you able to analyze the reinforced concrete or steel sections, where you will get the bending moment diagram and the shearing force diagram, then you are ready for designing the material for concrete and steel structures. So this is where you are coming to this semester or uh, to this subject, you learn about to design uh, the concrete material and the steel section structures. So di sinilah you bermula nak belajar design. CO1 ni you tak perlu belajar, you kena ingat balik. Eh? Uh, yang CO2 ni, you are using this subject 338 to design. Ini pengalaman pertama you. Eh? And CO3, what is CO3? You are required to show atau to display the appropriate techniques to design reinforced concrete structures as well as steel structures design uh, by giving a problem 
So the problem can be given in the test, can be given in the mini projects, as well as the final exam. And when you design that, you must aware the limitation of that material. Eh? Ingat, eh? In any uh, aspect in our world, everything is subjected to limitations. There is no perfection in our world. Eh? So, setiap satunya ada dia punya kelemahan. So, when you want to design something, you must understand that limitation so that you can uh, design appropriately according to the standards and then you give the best performance of the design to the uh, society. Eh? So that will be about course outcome. Is there any question about course outcome? Ada apa-apa soalan tak? Course outcome? Sakit ini? There is a... Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Tiga seorang eh. Ha, minta ni Ahmad Daniel ada problem kan dengan webcam? Tolong buka eh Ahmad Daniel Farhan. Ha, saya bagi masa you open. So jangan risau eh. Saya akan randomly akan lihat you punya muka. Saya nak tengok memang muka webcam je lah eh. Saya takkan beritahu masa bila lah. So please beri prepare lah. Okay. Go back to our program outcome. Eh. Tadi saya dah cakap pasal cost outcome. Kenapa saya nak kena cerita cost outcome dalam program outcome ni? Sebab saya nak bagi you maklumat awal, the basic information about this subject. Eh. Kalau tidak, you tak tahu apa yang you belajar. Okay, program outcomes. Program outcomes, you have only three. PO2, PO3, program outcome 4, PO4. Eh. And if you see carefully, PO2 will be almost similar to your CO1. Why? Because PO2, you have to identify and analyze. Nampak? The same wording used here in the CO1. Okay. What is the meaning of identify and analyze? Okay. When you are given a problem, ni nampaknya you are the engineering problem. Eh? Problem ni bagi masa bila? Boleh diberi semasa test, can be given in the mini project, can be also given in the final exam. So memang you akan dapat problem. And when you get your problem, you must identify what the thing they want to identify. You have to identify what is the structure that you want to analyze. So usually, you are given technical engineering drawings. Maksudnya, selain daripada subjek structural analysis, you have also to remember a bit about technical drawing subjects. Sebab soalan you diberi dalam bentuk drawings. Eh? So, bila nak tengok drawing tu, you kena pandai nak kenal pasti identify tu. Apa yang you buat? Kalau you tak faham technical drawing, you cannot do anything. So, maksudnya kalau you tak boleh buat apa, maksudnya you tak boleh capai PO2 ni. Bila you tak boleh capai PO2, confirm CO1 pun tak boleh capai. Right? So, kena faham eh? So, macam mana you nak mencapai tu? You have to uh, reach what is the conclusion. So, what is the meaning of conclusion? The conclusion in terms of design solution. What is the section of your concrete they want to propose? Contohnya. How many steel areas they want to propose? Contohnya. So that is the conclusion yang you nak buat. Okay? And how to reach that conclusion? You must reach that concrete using methods of analysis. Kita ada banyak method of analysis yang kita akan study sekejap lagi. Eh? Okay, that is PO2. Next is PO3. Again, PO3, it will be linked almost similar like CO2. Why? Because the wording design solution here is similar also with CO2. Okay? So PO3 is to perform design solution with the design systems where you have to propose the components that you want to design. So what are the components that you will design? You will design the, the beam. You will design slab. 
you will design columns, you will design foundation. So that's are the components that you will design eh? uh, with appropriate consideration. So when you perform any design, yaitu tadi saya cakap pasal beam, slab, column, uh, foundation, you must have to perform thinking on the consideration. Consideration about what? About public health and safety. So for sure, you akan nasihkan satu bangunan yang selamat kepada public. Yang elok untuk public. Eh? Where the building does not collapse. Where the beam does not cracks. Where the beam does not corroded and so on. So maksudnya, your design solution is very useful until it is good for public health. Itu tujuan dia. You buat design. Eh? As well as also about the cultural and societal. This is depending on the surrounding. Eh, surrounding. So maybe if the building that you want to design is masjid, so you have to consider about the masjid cultural punya aspect. Lah, eh? And also to satisfy environmental consideration. So any building that you want to design, you must understand the environment. For example, if let's say, for example, if let's say, uh, the building is situated nearby the seaside, dekat dengan laut. For sure, the air that is in contact with your building structures have a lot of salt. Sebab air laut ada garam. Bila ada garam, dia akan terpeluap dalam udara dan dia akan terapung-apung di atas udara. Is it? Dan bila hujan turun, that salt that is terapung-apung di udara will be deposited on the your building structures. So when you want to design that such structure, you have to consider the environmental effect. Faham eh? Maybe satu lagi keadaan, if let's say you want to design the foundation, foundation apa? Structure yang you letak dalam tanah tu. If let's say the soil surrounding that structures have a lot of salt, such as sulfate. Sulfate ni ada dalam banyak tanah. Eh? Sulfate is a very uh, hazardous substances where it can penetrate the concrete. And at the end of the day, it will uh, corrode the steel inside the concrete. So, mesti ada pertimbangan yang khusus bila you berdepan dengan situasi environment sebegitu. Eh? So, that's why in PO2, uh, sorry, PO3, the statement will be something like this. Okay, so that is PO3. The last program outcome, which is PO4, is to show some investigation behavior among of you. Dan biasa ni kita akan buat ini in your mini project lah. Because we need your investigative nature lah. You ada keupayaan untuk menyiasat. When you are given a problem, where you will find certain information from supplier, maybe in form of catalogs, maybe in form of information, where you are required to design the mini project problem dengan menggunakan standard yang kita bekalkan dan maybe melakukan pengukuran kalau perlu. So that's why you have to understand this PO2, PO3 and PO4. Sebab inilah skop apa yang you akan belajar. Okay, setakat ni boleh faham tak tentang cost outcome and also program outcomes for ECS338? Ada tak sebarang soalan? There is a... okay, benda ni nampak macam remeh ya. Tapi sebenarnya dia memberi input yang besar kepada you sebab Inilah you punya summary apa yang you nak belajar. Eh? Okay. Uh, ya, ya. Saya nak tanya. Pasal mini projek tu. Okay. Uh, saya, saya, Muzamil. Saya nak tanya. Okay. Pasal mini projek tu maknanya cara kita pengurusan kita dengan supplier ke? Pasal barang-barang kita nak guna. Okay. We we are not 
to take the measurement of your uh, apa ni, performance based on that. Your performance is based maybe you find the catalog from the respected client ataupun uh, supplier. You just get the catalog and show it inside your caption. Itu dah cukup. Maksudnya you dah ada effort uh, menunjukkan bahawa you ada kerjasama lah dengan supplier. Kita tak adalah sampai nak you nak tunjuk bukti WhatsApp you tak payahlah. Kan? Okay, that is part of it lah. And after that, you also to show your cooperation between your groups. Macam biasa lah, project group ada empat orang. Hmm. So, dalam project group tu mesti tunjukkan lah ada kerjasama dan report tu. As well as the technical part which is the calculation part yang you akan produce based on the scope given to each member. Member kawan you yang pertama uh, buat uh, apa ni? Buat contohnya uh, Uh, buat analisis Banding movement And sharing force So itu kerja dia je Tunjukkan Okay maybe kawan yang kedua Sambung To design the reinforcement Maybe Kawan yang ketiga Prepare AutoCAD drawings Maybe And maybe kawan yang keempat Buat report Maybe I do not know That you you can divide your your scope lah So that also giving the 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 marks Of the mini project Yang membawa kepada 20% Cumanya saya tak tahu Pada semester ini Bagaimana perubahan itu kepada markah sebab sudah berubah 10% bertambah. Dulu kita menggunakan 10% saja. Tapi sekarang sudah menjadi 20%. Berkemungkinan ada benda yang ditambah oleh UITM Pahang untuk memberi apa ni rubrik untuk additional 10% tu. Mungkin sama, mungkin berubah. Nanti saya akan beritahu pada you. Eh, sebab dia dah ada perubahan. Cuma saya uh, menganggap perubahan ini memberi kebagusan kepada you. Sebab apa? You sepatutnya dah boleh dapat carry mark yang bagus. Uh, sebab semester lepas, bila 30% test tu ramai kantoi. Susah nak mendapat 15 per 30 tu pun macam seksa. Separuh mati. Kan? So hopefully by project you get can get almost 20, dia membantulah. Tapi janganlah you abaikan test juga. Janganlah you nak harap projek je. Teruklah kan. Tak boleh lah. Kena buat dua-dua bagus lah. You jangan jadi uh, nak ambil yang mudah aja, Yang susah tak nak. Tak boleh kan. Eh? Eh? Okay. I think I, I, I have answer you. Mr. Mr. Muhammad Muzamil. Uh, you macam okay. class rep punya feature eh. Boleh jadi class rep eh. Ada nampak gaya keberpilihan eh. Okay. Thank, thank you sir. <laughs> oh patutlah. Okay. Good good candidates lah. Okay. Kita sama balik eh. Okay. Okay. Uh, apa subjek ni kita akan belajar sebenarnya? Sekali lagi. This course dealing with the method of analysis. Sekali lagi saya beritahu. Bila you nampak saja perkataan analysis. Di sini. Di sini. Di sini. Maksudnya tak boleh lupa structure analysis. Tolonglah jangan lupa macam nak kira shear force diagram. Dengan bending moment diagram kalau dibagi load. Eh, tolong jangan lupa. And then, apa lagi yang dia nak cover? Dia nak cover design. Ah, Yang ni yang you belajar. Yang ni saya tak akan ajar. Yang ini yang kita nak belajar. How to design the reinforce concrete structures as well as steel structures. So macam mana kita nak reka bentuk ni? Eh? Design dalam bahasa yang Melayu lah. Reka bentuk eh. Kita design based on standard. Dia bukan-bukan suka-suki kita je. Dia ada satu panduan yang kita namakan sebagai piawaian. Standard tu piawaian lah. Right? Macam sirip lah. Kita ada piawai. Eh? Okay. So for the first week, this will be the activity that you will cover with me. Uh, which is covered about two topics within three hours. Eh? Which is a very challenging for me. And I don't think I can, uh, within three hours, I will compete complete topic 1 and topic 2. Biasanya saya akan pinjam satu jam minggu depan lah untuk complete topic 2. Sebab banyak eh. And remember, yang ini satu perkara yang you kena ingat eh. Topic 1 and topic 2 memang soalan biasa teori. 5 marks until 8 marks in your test as well as in your final. 5 hingga 8. Memang soalan pertama. Topik 1 dan topik 2. Teori eh. 
Okay, what will be uh, asked in uh, will be uh, learned in this topic one. So saya dah terangkan tadi introduction about 338 saya dah cerita eh. And then saya dah cerita about PO program outcomes and course outcome. And after this I will show some information about OBD sekejap lagi. Okay. And I have given to you also about the syllabus content a bit, some assessment and references belum lagi. Sekejap lagi saya akan tunjukkan buku-buku rujukan. Eh? Okay. Uh, nanti di akhir kelas nanti, 2 jam depan ni, saya mengharapkan you buat diagnosis test. So, diagnosis test ni macam mana you nak tahu kena buat? You can open back you punya, you punya apa benda ni? MS Team. Eh? You ada satu MS Team ECS338 for C1, C2. Saya ada letak satu notis kat situ. Where you can download Uh, diagnosis test punya soalan kemudian you baca soalan tu kemudian you write the solution on a piece of paper you tak payah gunakan kertas yang sama buat kertas lain scan the solution with your phone and attach it with the question answers dan lengkap dengan nama dengan detail as pdf okay. and dalam notification tu juga saya ada letak link where you can submit that diagnosis test So this should be done after the class end dan saya bagi masa lah sampai pukul satu. Eh, you buatlah masa makan tu pun boleh hantar lah. Sebab kita tak makan kan, bulan puasa kan. Okay. Okay, so you kena buat ni eh, diagnosis test eh. Entrance survey, you have to use your, your future code eh. Kalau saya tak silap lah. Yang ni biasalah you buat kan pada mana-mana subjek eh. Okay. So what is topic one is all about is the introduction of the structural reinforced concrete design. So usually reinforced concrete design, I will use this no notion, RC. So please do not uh, feel very aware. Kalau saya gunakan perkataan RC, RC stands for reinforced concrete. Eh? So what you will learn in this topic one, you will learn about the basic concept of RC design you will learn what is the basic aspect for designing RC structures in terms of what? In terms of code of practice. And what is code practice? Your standards. Piawa yang you nak gunakan untuk design, dia ada code of practice, which, which is the relevant standards that you will use. So how to get your code of practice? I have already put inside your future folder under my name. You will buka your future. Di situ ada satu folder namanya Code of Practice. You can download the Code of Practice inside that. Eh? And what are the aspect to be learned in this topic is to understand the limit state design, the characteristic materials, the strength, the characteristic load. So saya yakin semua ni you tak pernah tengok. Eh? And the last one in topic one is the partial safety factor and the corresponding design loads. So, you boleh nampak tak perkataan load kat sini. Perkataan load ni maksudnya apa? You punya, you punya loading, eh? you punya force, you punya UDL, you punya point loads, you punya triangular loads, trapezoidal loads, you punya torsion. So, all are inside this. So, maksudnya you tak boleh lupa macam mana nak kira bending moment and shear force. Eh? Uh, so, what is the uh, lesson outcome after ending the first hour? you should be able to identify, identify dalam bahasa Melayu masih kenal pasti, eh? identify the relationship between concrete and reinforcement. So, apa hubung kait antara semen ataupun concrete? Semen ni maksudnya tak campur dengan batu dengan air. Eh? Bila semen dah campur batu dengan air, dia jadi concrete. So, kita nak tengok dia punya hubungan antara concrete dengan steel reinforcement in terms of what? In terms of safety, in terms of economy, and in terms of ethics. So that is the first learning outcome. Lah. The second learning outcome is to make sure that you can explain the ultimate limit states and the serviceability limit states. So there are dual cost outcome, sorry, learning outcome di dalam topik 1. Eh? And after that, I will proceed to the second topic in the same week, masih minggu ni eh, 
the structural concrete design. Okay, di sinilah bermulanya calculations. Okay, topic one is more on theory. Topic two, starting your calculation parts. Okay, sebab apa? Sebab dah start dengan analysis. Eh, analysis. Bila perkataan analysis ni, you kena buat calculation. Dah tak boleh elak dah. Eh, analysis of your RC sections where you analyze based on the block diagram, the stress block diagram, which is can found in your Euro codes two. And based on one stress block, which is rectangular, kita ada tiga stress block. Eh? Kita ada triangular, kita ada parabolic, kita ada rectangular. For simplification, we will use only rectangular. So, jangan pening-pening kepala. Just understand in terms of dengar aja. Eh? Uh, so, rectangular stress block, you will design based on two kind of design, which is either single ataupun doubly reinforced section. Kita ada dua jenis. And after that, you are required to develop or derive the moment of resistance uh, values based on the stress block diagram so that you can determine the ultimate moment of resistance sebelum keratan yang diberi pada itu crack. Eh, dalam bahasa Melayu, crack ni apa? Retak. Sebab sebelum keratan itu nak meretak, dia mesti ada maximum moment yang dia kena terima dulu sebelum dia start retak. Okay, what is the required lesson uh, lesson outcome? Ah, ini banyak sikit eh. You are required to compare and contrast. So, bila perkataan compare and contrast maksudnya apa? You memerlukan critical thinking. Dah lama tak dengar ayat ni kan? Critical thinking kan? Maksud perlu gunakan otak. Otak untuk apa? Untuk nak buat compare and contrast. Compare maksudnya apa? Maksudnya apa? Membandingkan membandingkan dan boleh menghuraikan secara kritikal. Eh? The stress strain relationship. Okay. Stress strain. Ini maksudnya secara tak langsung you kena ingat subjek apa? Solid mechanics. Sebab dalam subjek ini saja you jumpa perkataan stress and strain. Masih ingat lagi ke? Stress and strain ni? Solid mechanics. Ya kawan-kawan, yes. ingat kan? So, you nampak tak? Subjek ni berat. Eh? Berat. Sebab itulah, saya bukan nak menakutkan anda. Eh? Semester lepas, saya terpaksa mengajar student repeat yang mana 60% pelajar gagal pada semester sebelum itu. Kenapa? Sebab subjek ini memerlukan anda memahami tiga subjek yang di belakang iaitu technical drawings, Structural Analysis, Solid Mechanics. Kalau tiga benda ni you kantoi, ataupun just aras hidung saja, ia merupakan satu azab yang berat lah bila you nak buat subjek ni. So, please pre-prepare. Saya beritahu you awal-awal, tolong kukuhkan pengetahuan tiga subjek ni dulu. Eh? Saya bukan nak menakutkan, tapi saya bagi you warning. Eh? Jangan termasuk dalam kategori yang merasakan azab. Second learning outcome is to illustrate, eh, menggambarkan and compute, menghitung. As I said, topik ni penuh dengan calculation. Eh. That's why ada compute. Compute the strain and stress distribution across the section using stress block diagram. Okay. And after that, you are required to analyze. Perkataan analyze ni masuk kena kira lah. Memang tak boleh elak mengira. Analyze the stress block so that you can design for singly and doubly reinforced rectangle section. Sama ada keratan segi empat ataupun keratan flange. Nanti kita akan tengok apa benda ni. And after that, classify the section. Whether the section is under reinforced, adakah balance sections ataupun over reinforced section. So that will be the coverage of the two topics. So sebenarnya kalau tengok pada minggu hadapan pun kita sambung juga lagi topik ni eh, sebab tak memang saya kata tak cukup masa eh 3 jam minggu ni eh, memang ada. So yang lain-lain ni saya tak akan cover. Uh, saya akan cover nanti minggu depan saya akan tunjukkan apa yang nak cover minggu depan lah eh.
Minggu ni ini kita nak cover. This is our topic to be covered today. Okay, setakat ni boleh tak memahami apa yang kita nak buat pada minggu ini? Ada persoalan tak? So, kalau nak screenshot ni boleh, it's up to you. Uh, cuma this is draft eh. The final version will be given to you soon eh. And uh, I just want to show you, concrete ni nak belajar berapa lama? This concrete section you will learn until week 9. Nampak? Daripada 14 minggu, 9 weeks is allocated for concrete saja. So you boleh agak eh, final exam soalan mana yang banyak. Eh, and after the gawai break, barulah minggu ke-10 until minggu ke-14, barulah baru buat steel design. Empat minggu untuk steel, sembilan minggu untuk konkret. So you boleh bayangkan soalan yang mana yang banyak keluar. Eh, dia punya proportion tu. Dia, dia, dia punya proportion eh. And biasanya on week 10, mana minggu 4, minggu sorry, minggu 10, project mini akan diberi. So minggu ke-10 tu, I will give you the mini project question where you can start to form your groups and you can start the project to be submitted biasanya sebelum exam bermula. Eh, biasa kita akan nyantar pada minggu ke-14. Eh, sebelum revision week. Okay, boleh faham tak? Dia punya uh, flow chart lah lebih kurang. How the how the course is run. Boleh tak? Boleh, sir. Okay, sekejap eh, saya nak charge sekejap. Eh. Uh, laptop saya, okay. Okay, cantik. So, saya tutup ni eh. Okay, so I will start with my lecture. Uh, I think some of this has been uh, given before. Sebenarnya dah beritahu pun. This is uh, my name, Mr. Syarul Fitri bin Senin. I'm your lecturer for this subject for 14 weeks. Okay. And if let's say after the Hari Raya, you will come back to the UITM. You can meet me at level 6 block perdana okay uh, my room is nearby the photo state machine uh, bangunan perdana tingkat 6 and if you want to contact me by email this is my email okay uh, i have teaching these subjects about two semesters ago okay and before this i teach this subject also maybe another 6 years before so this is my second time to teach this subject Okay, uh, again, you are required to attend three hours of lecture and one of the tutorial is a three credit hours. Requisite is two for it. Dan saya tambah lagi technical drawings, tambah lagi solid mechanics. Okay, okay some OBE, uh, saya cuma cerita secara umum. Eh. Uh, saya rasa you pun dah tahu benda ni. Uh, outcome based education. Uh, what is OBE? OBE is only a method, eh? a method or a way where you design the curriculum. So what is the meaning of the curriculum? Curriculum here, if uh, one of it is, let's say, your lesson plan that I have given to you, the lesson plan, the syllabus, okay, the assessment. So that all we call as curriculum. So that curriculum we have to design. Eh? Dia bukan uh, datang daripada langit, tiba-tiba kita jalankan. Tak boleh. We have to plan and design so that we can teach and the student can focus what they are should be should be masters. Eh? So, masa kita akan uh, design supaya contentnya sesuai dengan pelajar and student can focus to whatever skills that should be taught. And in order to design this curriculum, we have to uh, do based on these four questions. Lah. We should know how do you have to learn that topic. So after we understand how you have to learn th that topic, then you can design the curriculum uh, uh, sufficiently for you. Lah. Why do you have to learn? So maksudnya, apa objektif you nak learn that topic? So you kena tahu lah objektif. Eh? How can you learn this? So you can learn it from maybe from this uh, uh, lecture online. You can learn by discussion with me. You can learn from textbooks. You can learn from maybe uh, interaction with other lecturers and so on. Eh? How will you know that you have learned? So that's why we have 
uh, give you a kind of assessment. You have to undergo the test. You have to undergo the final effort, final, final exam, mini project, so that we can measure whether you have learned or not. And sometimes I will give you some formative question in tutorial so that I can mark your, your understanding and you, you will form about your performance. Eh? So this is what is OBE all about. Lah. Dia cara untuk kita nak pastikan kita design apa yang kita nak ajar tu sampai pada you. Okay. Ha, yang ni tak masuk exam eh. Tak ada tanya eh. Cuma maklumat je eh. Tak ada tanya pun ni eh. And uh, these are four principles of OBE lah. Kita kena tahu what is the focus of outcomes. So if you still remember, I've, uh, I have apa ni, a list out the learning outcome tadi. Eh, tadi saya ceritakan topik one, apa learning outcome. Ah, itu outcomes. So we have to focus the outcome. Sebab itu saya bersungguh-sungguh tadi cerita pasal learning outcome tadi. Yang ada dua dekat topik one dan ada empat ke lima tadi untuk topik tu. Sebab I want you as a student knows your focus. Ha, nampak ni, let the student know what they are aiming for. Sebab itu saya cerita tadi, panjang lebar. And we design the curriculum based on that outcomes and so that you ensure that that outcome will give you high expectation of success. So tak adalah kita nak buat satu topik yang kita tak ajar, tiba-tiba kita nak test. Tak boleh lah. Macam mana you nak dapat markah yang tinggi kan? So kita kena ajar apa yang kita ajar. Kita test apa yang kita ajar so that you can have high expectation, high marks. Okay? And this or this OB also make to ensure that you can you can learn on your piece, your own piece. Maksudnya dia memberi peluanglah kepada you belajar secara berdikit-dikit mengikut you punya kemampuan okay? at your own piece. So uh, nampak eh? prinsip ni memang menarik lah. Cuma kadang-kadang student ni dia tak faham. Eh, dia dia tak faham peranan dia. Walaupun kami di UITM sudah mereka bentuk silibus yang terbaik. Tetapi mereka tidak faham peranan dia orang. Dan akhirnya kecundang dalam peperiksaan. Eh, so tolong faham peranan masing-masing. Eh. So sebab itu saya terangkan ini eh, tentang OBE. Okay, for your uh, program outcomes, we have elaborated a lot about the three POs, PO2, PO3, and PO4. So I don't want to tell you about more about this because we have discussed about it. And then there are the other POs, and there are some changes inside your POs, eh? other perubahan. So I will give you this uh, updated one in the next lecture notes. Eh? I will share inside the, uh, your new future. Nanti, eh? Okay, we have three COs. Saya dah cerita tadi, we have three COs, CO1, CO2 and CO3. POs, you have PO2, PO3 and PO4. Senang saya nak ingat kan? Okay, uh, this is the syllabus content. Concrete will comprise about nine weeks. And after that, on week 10, ni sepatutnya week 10 ni eh, bukan 11 eh. Uh, until 14, you will study about the steel design eh. So the coverage of your concrete design will be the introduction in your topic one. And topic two, is the designing part. Eh? Uh, we take about eight weeks eh, to finish. Okay, test. Ah, uh, yeah, ini sudah silap. Eh? Test should be twenty percent. Ini semester lepas punya assessment. Biasanya dia akan berlaku pada minggu ke depan. Biasanya, eh? tetapi tak semestinya pada semester ini. So you will get the updated. Uh, uh, week when the test will be for you. Eh? Saya akan maklumkan. Tapi ini adalah secara umumnya begini. Tapi tak semestinya. Eh? Mini project have been uh, changed from 10 to 20 and will be given in week 10. So sebelum minggu akhir, you kena submit. And final exam after the revision week, you have 60%. Eh? So making 20, 20, 60, 100. Eh? And this is your reference books. Uh, you have two references books. The first book is uh, from UTM, University Technology Malaysia. Uh, saya rasa dia punya author Muhammad Saleh, Prof Muhammad Saleh, kalau tak silap saya. Uh, you can get it either by borrowing from UITM library, kalau you ada kat sini lah. 
ataupun you can get it from Shopee lah. It's about 65 ringgit. Kalau saya tak silap. Okay. And another book is uh, for steel, design of structure element. Uh, you can get it also in the library. Sebenarnya kedua-dua buku ni ada kat library eh. Tapi tak banyak lah. Dalam 5-6 biji je. So siapa cepat dia dapat lah. Okay. Kalau tak ada kena beli lah. Uh, the second book is for steel. And in the U future, you boleh nampak sini ada Euro code 2 and Euro code 3. So this Euro code 2 and Euro code 3 is your standards. So you kena download lah daripada U future these standards. Right? It's quite thick juga lah, tebal juga. Eh? Because when you come to the UI 10 later on after raya, benda ni memang menjadi uh, tempat you nak menyelak semua clauses tu. So memang kena cetak. Eh? Kena cetak. Dia menjadi satu bahan yang wajib dibawa pada setiap kelas. Okay. So masa 4 minggu ni maybe you terlepas lah sebab online kan. Ha, tapi selepas baik, balik saja ke kampus, memang kena bawa. Eh. Okay, yang ini the others reference book lah kalau you nak. Tapi saya akan gunakan most of all based on these two textbooks. Yes? yes. yes. Buku yang saya tunjuk ni uh, boleh pakai untuk ECS 358 juga ke? Ya yeah, memang betul. Masih oh, boleh dipakai sehingga ke alam pekerjaan pun. So tak ada satu benda yang merugikan pun kalau ia memiliki satu kopi. Eh? Even semasa degree pun boleh pakai. Even masa kerja pun boleh pakai. So satu investment. Investment yang amat berbaloi lah untuk dibeli lah. Eh, you dapat buku baru, you tak perlu nak conteng korang buku you. Eh? Okay. Ada separan soalan tak Sel selain daripada itu sebelum kita masuk awal lecture. So nampak 45 minit eh. Semata-mata benda ni eh, tak masuk lagi topik eh. Okay, so saya akan terus masuk pada first topic. Uh, introduction to the reinforced concrete design. Okay. Uh, our course outcome and program outcome will be stated in front of you to analyze the reinforced concrete and steel section in accordance with the relevant standards. And your standards is your Euro code 2 eh, for concrete eh. For concrete, you put two. Uh, week 10 nanti, you will use Euro code 3. So for the time being, you will use Euro code 2 only lah. Euro code 3 is on week 10. Okay. Uh, PO2 is to identify, analyze, well-defined problems reaching substrate concrete using qualified. Okay. So at the end of the lesson, you should be able to list the reference used for design. List the reference. You should be able to explain the basic concept of RC design. You should be able to describe what are the material used for construction and what is the function of the members in the building. Describe and explain the limit state design, yaitu merangkumi ultimate limit states and serviceability limit states. Sorry. Discuss the concept and importance of this factor that we call as partial safety factor for loads and materials and list and elaborate the loading types that can apply on the structures. So sebenarnya benda ini apa dia? Inilah soalan-soalan bocu yang boleh saya katakan keluar sebagai teori in your final exam dan juga dalam apa ni dalam test. So kalau you boleh Able to do this should be 5 hingga 8 markah tu dalam tangan you. Okay. Boleh eh? Boleh faham eh? So you dah tahu kan tujuan you nak belajar topik ni? Ini eh? Tahu kan? Any questions? Sorry, sorry. Okay. So we start with the lecture. Introductions to Eurocode documents. So, uh, for designing purposes, remember that we have a lot of standards that you have to deal with, starting with the Euro norm 19, sorry, Euro norm 1990. EN stands for Euro norm. Eh? EN stands for Euro norm. Kenapa ada Euro? Because it is developed in Europe. Euronom. Euronom 1990. 
And what is the content of this EN 1990 is the basis of structural design. It talks about how to perform structural design and all of the aspect is given in this code, okay? EN 1990. Setengah orang, dia gunakan, uh, dia, dia mudahkan ini kepada EC0. So why EC0? Zero? zero coming from this zero, eh? EC maksudnya apa? Euro codes. So kadang-kadang orang namakan EN1990 ni sebagai EC0. Pun boleh juga diterima. Okay? The next document of Euro codes is called as Euronorm1991 or EN1991 which talks about actions on structures. So what is the meaning of actions? Action is the loads. Eh? Loads. And you can also use EC1 to represent this document. Eh? So one here coming from where? Coming from the number one here. Okay. You will put one. The next document, which is will be used mainly for our topic, is called as Euronorm 1992, ataupun EN 1992 which is giving the guideline how to design the concrete structures. Uh, inilah tiga dokumen utama that you will use for nine weeks for concrete. You will use for concrete. Sembilan minggu eh. And this code, uh, this document also can call as Euro code 2. And again, this number 2 is coming from is the ending end of 1992. Okay. And after week number 10, you will design the apa ni, steel, uh, steel structures. Then you need another document called as EN 1993, Euronorm 1993, which is discussed about the design of steel structures. Some other people call this as EC3. Again, Three is coming from this figure. And itu digunakan pada minggu ke-10 until minggu ke-14. The rest of the code is not used in our syllabus. Why? Because Euro code 4 ataupun EC4 is for composite steel. Yang mana kita tak design pun. Kita tak design composite steel dalam subjek ni. Kita cuma buat concrete dengan steel saja. Composite steel is another system which is not covered. We are also not designing timber. Kita tak design kayu. Eh? So Euro code 5 also does not. Uh, we don't have to use it in this syllabus. Masonry structure, which is EC6. You punya batu bata, bata dinding. Eh? Kita tak design Euro code 6. We are not also designing geotechnical structures. EC7. So yang ini semua tak ada, eh? tak pakai, tak pakai, tak pakai, tak pakai. We also not design your structures to earthquake. Kita tak ambil kira pun beban daripada gempa bumi. Eh? So EC8 is not covered. And kita tak design also for alloy. Apa? An, uh, aluminium structures. Eh? But if let's say in the test ataupun in the final exam ask you to list down some of the codes, so sepatutnya you can list down the whole thing lah. Tak kisahlah you belajar atau tidak. You list down the whole thing lah. Dah tentu terutamanya EC0, EC1, EC2, EC3 tu mesti dah menjadi salah satu jawapan you. EC4 until EC9 pun menjadi salah satu jawapan kepada listing tu. Eh, sebab nampak ni, you can list the reference. Ni nampak ni, list the reference ni. I have already given to you the list and also the description of the list. Boleh faham tak? Faham, sir. Okay. Eh, ini semua dokumen. Eh? Dokumen. Yang ada dalam new future adalah Euro Code 0, EC0, EC1, EC2, EC3. Itu ada dalam saya punya folder new future. EC4 until EC9, you boleh download on your own sebab kita tak pakai. Tapi you kena tahu adalah. Eh? Yang itu tak ada dalam new future. Okey, nampak ni EC0, EC1, EC2, EC3. Ah ni dalam new future dia eh. Eh, so kalau saya padam semua ni, 
Saya discard. You boleh nampak ayat-ayat ni semua. Okay. So this one is in the you future. Yang lain tak ada. Eh? Okay. Again, uh, I want to discard the 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 description about each of the codes. Uh, sekejap, eh? saya kena buat pen. So you have e en 1990 or some people call it as EC0. So what is EC0? It talks about the basis of structural design. And in terms of what? In terms of to achieve safety. In terms to achieve serviceability. In terms to achieve durability. So surat tentulah when you want to design any structures, regardless uh, made from concrete, regardless made from steel or steel uh, or aluminium, all the structures must be safe. There is no one in the world want to use a bridge where you across it, suddenly it collapse. Tak ada orang dalam dunia pun nak rasa macam tu kan? So, you have to know that your structure must be designed for safety. Maksudnya selamat. Orang rasa orang rasa bila nak melintas jambatan yang, yang you design tu memang rasa selamat. Dan ini semua will be given in this Euro code zero. Uh, the structure also must be serviceable. Eh? What is the mean of serviceable? Uh, if let's say I'm talking about concrete, serviceability meaning that if let's say you have a beam, eh? So I think I want to use another slide, which is empty here. If let's say you have a beam, let's say this is your beam. Eh? I draw in a 3D. And that beam is supported by certain supports. Okay, And then you have loads acting on the, on the uh, beam. For sure, this beam will be deflected. Mau tak mau mesti dia deflect. And these deflections we call as serviceability. Eh, tidak ada structure dalam dunia ni bila letak load, dia tak boleh deflect. Eh? Itu tak mungkin. Eh? Must be deflected. You kena benarkan benda tu berlaku. Kalau you boleh buat structure tu tak deflected, that is very wrong. Sebab nature of any structures, it will be deflected. Tetapi dia taklah deflected sampai nampak roboh. Eh? Dia deflected but very, very small. Maybe one times 10 to power of negative 3 millimeter. Dia deflect but very small. Okay? And also, you have to allow some structures, let's say in concrete, to be have some cracking a bit. Small cracking. Bukan cracking yang you nampak. Eh? micro cracking in terms of micron meter you kena benarkan tu so deflections and cracking is considered as serviceability you kena benarkan itu happens and what is the durability okay, the third factor ni durability meaning that uh, sekejap eh daripada semalam ni kapal terbang ni asyik berlega-lega atas di ruang udara ni Sekejap ni bagi kabel terbang ni lepas sekejap dalam 2-3 saat. Buat bising. Okay. What is durability? In Malay, durability is called as tahan lasak. Eh, tahan lasak dengan masa. So if let's say you 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 design let's say a column. Eh, let's say you design a column. I want to use another slide. Let's say you design a column. Tiang. And this column is a JT. Maksudnya you have sea water. Right? You ada uh, air laut kat situ. If you design this concrete not sufficiently well, this column maybe after 10 years, you can see spot of rusting steel. Dia akan berkarat sebab besi dalam tu akan menjadi berkarat. Dia you akan nampak tompok-tompok karat tu pada pembukaan konkrit. So semasa itu, you can say that this column is not durable. Dia tak tahan lasak. Jadi kita tak boleh tak boleh benda ni berlaku pada bilik konkrit. 
Eh, ataupun let's say your concrete have a very severe cracks. Tak boleh. So meaning that if you have that structure, your concrete is not durable enough. So you have to ensure that your structure to be safe, your structure to be serviceable, your structure must be durable, and all of that is stuck inside Eurocode 0. Boleh faham tak Eurocode 0 sekarang secara ringkas? Boleh, sir. Okay, now I want to talk the next document called as EN 1991 ataupun kita panggil sebagai Eurocode 1 ataupun kalau nak pendek lagi, dia adalah EC1. Ah, ni lagi pendek lah. EC1. And what is EC1 document talks about? It talks about the action acting on structures. Apa benda pula action ni? Eh? Simply speaking, action is called as loads. Eh? Loads. So contohnya, let's say you have slab. Lantai, lantai. Lantai concrete. So I draw a 3D diagram of your slab. Slab yang you tengah duduk sekarang ni. Yang you tengah, yang you tengah duduk ni. Eh? You kat rumah kan, mesti ada lantai kan. So that slab is subjected to what actions? It is subjected to your self-weight. Berat badan you merupakan action kepada lantai. Berat badan you. Eh? Kalau you makan lepas puasa, berat badan you bertambah. Masa berpuasa, berat you ringan. Eh, maybe lah kalau puasa kan. Ha. So your loads, your weight is considered as your actions. Apa lagi yang berjalan pada slab ni? Your tables that you put your laptop now is also acting as a loads. Berat, 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 berat uh, meja tu. Apa lagi? You punya wardrobe. You punya tempat nak isi, you punya apa? You punya baju-baju tu. Almari tu. Also giving a load to your slab. Apa lagi? Macam-macam lah yang you letak dekat lantai tu kan. So, this kind of loads is giving inside Eurocode 1. Okay. Dia bagi guideline, what is the value of the loads yang you kena letak pada lantai. So maksudnya, value loads of the structure tak boleh membabi buta. Dia bukan satu nilai yang you dapat daripada structure analysis. Dia ada nilai minimum that you should plug in and you use for design. Faham eh? Eurocode 1? Okay, the next document is for design, which is these two yang important lah. Euro code 2 is for concrete yang kita gunakan sampai 9 minggu tu. And Euro code 3 yang kita guna 4 minggu saja is for steel. And these two kind of codes we use for design purpose and detailing. You gunakan untuk mereka bentuk. Nak reka bentuk apa? Okey. Ah, saya cerita sekarang ni. Apa yang nak reka bentuk? Apa benda yang reka bentuk eh? Ah, ni cerita ni. Ah, ni pula semi pen ni. Let's see you want to design your slab tadi lah. Ah, senang saya ambil slab tadi. I use the same example slab. As engineer or technicians later on, you have to determine what will be the slab thickness. Tebal ni berapa? You kena tahu. Adakah 110 cukup mm? Adakah 250 mm cukup? You have to determine by design. By design. Nampak ni? Nak kena design. Selain daripada thickness apa? You have also to determine what will be the steel rebar inside you. Dalam concrete, kalau you pernah pergi tapak bina, eh, you can see a lot of reinforcement that you put before you pour your concrete. So berapa banyak besi tu, you kena tentukan. You have to design. Bukannya datang begitu saja dari langit. Eh. You have to determine what are the diameter of the rebar, how many spacing that you use for the rebar, and so on. Okay. Ini kalau slab. If let's say you have beam. Eh. If let's say you have beam. Beam ni biasa kalau you tengok dekat rumah teres kan. Kalau you mendongak ke atas kan. You akan nampak beam tau. Terjojol dekat bawah tu. You mesti nampak beam. 
So as a designer, you have to determine what is the size of the beam. Ni berapa lebar ni? You kena tentukan. Berapa dalam ni? You kena tentukan. And what are the reinforcement dalam ni? What, how many reinforcement you nak kena tentukan? So all of this is determined based on design. Dia bukan datang wahyu dari langit, tiba-tiba jadi gitu. No. You have to design. Based on what? Kalau you design based on concrete, you have to use EC2. If you design steel structures, you have to use EC3. Kalau you design timber, you kena gunakan EC5 yang kita tak cover lah pada semester ni. Kalau you design aluminium alloy, you kena gunakan Eurocode 9. Kalau you design composite beam, Eurocode 4 dan seterusnya. Faham tak? Faham saya. Okay, there are another two codes yang memang kita tak pakai pun lah. Eurocode 7 for your technical and Eurocode 8 eh, kita tak guna lah. Uh, usually this is for your technical lah. Siapa-siapa belajar your tech, uh, you akan guna lah code ni. Eurocode 7 ni. Eh. And Eurocode 8. Eh. Kenapa seismic ini important in, in your technical? Sebab earthquake is transmitted from soil. Tak pernah lah earthquake transfer daripada, daripada udara eh. Tak pernah eh. Uh, gempa bumi ni bila bergerak, tanah yang bergerak. Sebab itu dia termasuk dalam geotechnical. Eh? Gempa bumi menggegarkan tanah, eh? bukan menggegarkan udara. Eh? Ha, sebab itu, you bila belajar Eurocode untuk apa ni geotechnical, dia akan bersekalilah dengan Eurocode 8 ni. Okey, boleh faham? Ada soalan tak setakat ni? Any any question from the floor? Tidak sir. Tidak sir. Is patut you dah paham eh? From Eurocode zero until Eurocode eight. So kalau soalan test tanya, jangan kata saya tak aja, saya dah aja. Eh? Okay. Okay. Now we talk about reinforced concrete ataupun RC. So now we want to learn this material so that we can know. The, the, the behavior of this. Eh? So what is RC structures? RC structures is actually is a composite material. Remember when you learn your solid mechanics, you have learned about so composite material. Saya yakin, mesti you pernah belajar composite material. What is the meaning of composite material? Boleh tak seseorang beritahu? Composite material ni apa? Apa composite material? Nak saya panggil nama ke? Ha, Nur Afrikah Aziz Izzati. What is composite material? Yang awak pernah belajar solid mechanic dulu ni. Janganlah buat-buat lupa. Baru je dua semester lepas kau belajar. Takkan lupa kot. Composite? Pernah dengar tak ni? Dengar kan? Alah, masa you belajar topik apa topik apa ni komposit ni yang you ada satu concrete section dalam tu ada besi. Lepas tu you kena kira stress and strain. Kan belajar kan? Ada tu. Cuma tak tahulah nota tu bubuh kat mana sekarang pun kita tak tahulah kedudukannya kan. Letak nota tempat lain tak apa, ilmu tu kena ada kat dalam otak. Kena simpan. Ah tak kisah you nak letak kat mana kat kampung pun tak kisah. Yang penting ada nota balik. Okay. Composite material ini that is the material made from at least two material. At least eh, sekurang-kurangnya dua bahan. And in this RC, Allah sila sorry, saya kena buat pen eh, dia dia. Terlupa nak aktifkan pen ni. And in this RC, because it is made from two material, which is concrete and steel, so dia satisfy lah dia punya definition ni. So that's why reinforced concrete is called as a composite material that combines concrete with steel reinforcement. Eh, maksudnya kalau saya lukis lah, saya pun dah lukis banyak kali lah benda ni. Tapi saya tak pandai nak lukis, tapi tak apalah saya lukis juga. So if you see, let's see a beam. This is the cross section of the beam. Eh? And you have a steel inside. So this is concrete. And then you have steel reinforcement.
So when you have two materials acting together, this is called as composite. Okay, masalahnya kenapa kita combinekan steel dengan concrete? Kenapa tak nak combinekan concrete tu dengan dengan benda lain? Kenapa mesti nak combine concrete and steel? Ha? Dia ada cerita dia. Okay, sekarang kita nak tengok kenapa kita combine. Okay. You must understand that kalau kita guna concrete saja, if you use concrete without any steel, concrete sebenarnya ada satu masalah. It's a brittle material. What is the meaning of brittle material? Boleh tak seseorang beritahu saya? Brittle ni apa? Brittle material apa dia? Oh, sorry. Brittle material ni apa? Uh, brittle bukan yang senang ni ke? Senang rosak. Senang break. Boleh lah. Saya terima lah. Nak senang cerita kan? Kita ni nak dekat-dekat. Tapi raya lambat lagi kan? Kalau kita makan kuih raya kan? Cuba bayangkan kuih raya tu tak serapoh itu. Boleh ke kita, kalau kita gigit kuih raya tu kan? Dia senang gigit ke? Senang tak gigit ke? Senang pecah tak? Suka tak kalau you makan kuih raya, nak gigit tu liat, liat benar kan? Sampai tak boleh ni, macam batu pun. You suka kuih raya yang rapuh ke yang tak rapuh? Rapuh. Rapuh lah. So, bahasa Melayu untuk berita adalah rapuh. So, kalau kita pergi balik pada konkret tadi, konkret adalah bahan yang rapuh. Se seperti seolah-olah, bila you gigit dia, dia macam, tapi tak adalah you nak gigit konkret kan? Memang lagi gigit patah. Seolah-olah begitulah. Very, very brittle. Ini masalah. Ini masalah. So, disebabkan masalah ini, that's why we kita kahwinkan dengan steel. Kita combine dengan steel. Okay. Sekejap ni, saya padam ni. So, that's why steel kat sini masuk dia punya dia punya line. Okay. Tetapi, steel good intention. intention. Okay. Steel good intention. So, concrete is a brittle material, meaning that when you apply certain stress, it will break up easily, especially under tensile stress. However, steel is strong in tensile stress. So, why not we combine concrete yang lemah dalam tensile dengan kita gunakan steel yang kuat dalam tensile, kita kahwinkan dua barang ni, for sure it can give a benefit to the people. Sebab itulah kita kahwinkan dua bahan ni. Eh? So, uh, there is also another good features of concrete. Walaupun dia rapuh. Tetapi concrete is strong in compression. Ah, dia ni bagus pula dekat compression. Eh? So masa sekarang you dah kenal lah. Concrete is not good in tension. Sebab itu dia jadi rapuh ataupun brittle. However, is very strong in compression. Ah, dia kuat pula dekat compression. Sebab itu... Dinding dekat rumah you dibuat oleh concrete. Sebab dinding adalah untuk menahan compression force. Kan dinding kan dia uh, load dia kan bertindak ke bawah. So bila bertindak ke bawah dia akan mampatkan you punya dinding. So dinding you tak adalah dibuat daripada bahan lain. Dibuat daripada concrete. Sebab concrete strong in compression. But is not good in tension. Steel is good in tension and compression. Ah. Steel ni pula dia bagus dalam dua-dua. Tension dia pun dia boleh tahan. Compression pun dia boleh tahan. Tapi concrete dia tak bagus in tension. But it is very strong in compression. So boleh faham tak? Dia punya dia punya sifat tu. Boleh faham tak? Sedikit tentang reverse concrete. Um. Ada persoalan tak setakat ni? Yang lain ni senyap aja. Saya dengar macam muzamil ni suara lah. Memang daripada tadi suara dia lah yang, yang muncul kan. Tak tahulah kalau suara dia sama macam lain ni saya tak tahu lah kan. Yang lain okey tak? Yes, okey kita ambil rehat 15 minit. You dah pening je eh. eh? Bau je sahur kan. So saya rasa kita ambil minat. Uh, minat lah. Kita ambil rehat 5 minit. Sekarang 9.14. Pukul 
18 kita akan mula balik. Boleh eh? You have 5 minit, take 5. You nak stretch ke apa ke? It's up to you. So 9.18 kita akan start. Kita ada seminit lagi untuk bermula eh. So nanti pukul 9.18 nanti you buka semua kamera balik. Okay, can you now open your camera? We want to start our lecture. Come on, come on. Lima minit je pun, bukan lama. Bagi you boleh ada sikit lah bernafas sikit kan. Tidak kena letih kan. Okay, yang lain mana ni? Cik Muhammad, Nur Idni, Adelia Hafiz. Buka-buka kamera. Okay, we start it again. Eh? Okay, you have, uh, kita recap a bit. Uh, reinforced concrete is a composite materials uh, that combining two uh, different materials, which is concrete and steel, 
Remember that concrete is a brittle material. So when I said brittle material, meaning that it's easily to be brick when you apply tensile force. But concrete is strong in compression stress. So that is the good part of concrete. Lah. They're good in compression stress, but not so good in tensile. So in order to uh, avoid that problem in concrete, we try to use steel reinforcement that is very strong in tensile and compression. And we will put that steel in the region of tensile so that it can give some kind of strengthening effect to the concrete. So the next slide, I want to show you the video how the concrete is called as brittle material. Okay? So this is an experimental lab demo where you can see here this is a concrete section yeah, which, which is under point load on the top of it the other satu point load kat atas ni and that point load is being increased and increased and increased until the concrete section is filled okay so see for your own You can hear the pop up, the crack sound of the concrete. You can hear that sounds. You boleh nampak ada serpian-serpian concrete sudah jatuh. Eh? And that's it. That is the brittle material failure. So can you, boleh tak you nampak bila dia nak gagal? Boleh tak you perasan? You boleh agak-agak tak? Oh, kejap lagi dia gagal. You boleh agak tak? Boleh. Can you predict? Boleh ke you predict? Uh, oh, kejap lagi dan busa dia patah. Boleh tak you predict? Tak boleh, sir. Tak boleh. Itu masalah untuk konkrit. If you use material made on concrete only you cannot predict the failure easily. Kenapa? Sebab it's a brittle material. Bayangkan, bayangkan eh, you beli satu rumah. Eh, pemaju tu kata kat you lah, uh, semua bangunan siap. Tapi saya letak konkrit saja eh. Daripada kolam, beam, slab, semua saya pakai konkrit tapi tak ada steel lah. Eh. You berani ke nak pakai bangunan tu? You berani tak nak beli bangunan tu? Saya rasa kalau ikut penjelasan saya, you tak akan berani lah. Sebab apa? Sebab you tak tahu dia gagal bila tau. Sedar-sedar saja buka mata, marah buka. Dah masuk soal kubur dah. Dah mati dah. Sebab you tak tahu bila nak jatuh. Bila dia nak film. Kenapa jadi begini? Because concrete has a brittle failure. It's very easily to be break under tensile load. And now I want to show you a video where you can see a concrete and steel is made together and see for your own the failure modes. Okay, sebelum tu, sebelum tu ini adalah tensile uh, test untuk riba. Eh. So tengok, saya rasa you pernah buat benda ni dekat makmal. Eh. Tadi kita tengok uh, buat concrete. Sekarang ni kita tengok pula untuk steel. Macam mana dia gagal? Besi ni ditarik dengan satu tensile force eh, dekat atas tu. Dekat bawah tu dia pegang. And then it will be, uh, uh, the, the tensile load will be increased and increased until you, and until the, the, the riba is filled. Eh. So you can see there is one region, necking, nampak tu warna merah tu. You boleh nampak tempat tu nak gagal. And then it will be snap. Dia akan patah. Nampak tu? Dia akan jadi necking. Eh? Nampak dia nampak. Ha, dia patah. So dalam hal ini, you boleh nampak tak dia punya tempat nak gagal tu? Boleh nampak? Boleh nampak tak? Ya? Yeah? You nampak tak necking tadi tu? Nampak. So maksud tempat tu, you dah boleh spot. Dia akan gagal. So nampak tak berbeza ciri-ciri Antara steel dengan konkrit. Konkrit you tak boleh nak tahu tempat mana dia nak patah pun you tak tahu. And then it's a very sudden. But still, 
the, the feeling is very gradual, dia lambat, and then you can see the spot where the place to be filled. So, that's why, why not we combine steel and concrete together? Dan ini saya nak tunjukkan dalam video ini. Okay, ini adalah concrete saja tanpa steel eh. You tengok macam mana. Concrete saja eh, tak ada steel. Ha, ini eh, dia akan test. So, you nampak tak dekat atas tu akan mengalami tensile uh, compression stress. Bottom dia akan tempatkan. Nampak dia tiba-tiba saja. A very sudden. A very sudden. Tanpa steel eh. Okay, sekarang ni saya tunjukkan kalau you letak steel, nampak tu ada steel eh. And then you will pour concrete and see what is the failure modes. So, you boleh nampak tak ada retak-retak dekat bawah tu? Nampak tak? You boleh perasan retak-retak dekat bawah tu. Gambar di atas adalah brittle failure without any steel. Dekat bawah tu, ductal failure. Brittle failure, you cannot see the cracks. But when you put a reinforcement inside concrete, Sebelum dia nak gagal, you dah nampak tempat tu ada retak. Maksudnya apa? Maksudnya you ada sufficient time untuk keluar daripada bangunan itu sebelum dia roboh. Berbeza sangat kalau building itu hanya menggunakan konkrit, you tak tahu tempat tu nak gagal atau tidak. That's why we like to mix reinforced concrete by using cement and steel. So faham tak sekarang ni kenapa kita combine dua material ni sampai kita gunakan dalam bangunan? Nampak tak? Okay. Eh, Britain ni maksudnya rapuh eh. Rapuh ni maksudnya dia senang nak gagal dan kita tak boleh nak tahu tanda-tanda dia. Simptom nak gagal tu kita tak tahu. Macam macam kalau kita sakit kan. Kalau kita sakit kita tahu sebab kita demam kita boleh ukur dengan termometer. Jadi maksudnya benda tu kita boleh jumpa doktor. Jadi kita tahu simptom dia. Tapi kalau sakit contoh macam cancer, you tak tahu tau. Tiba-tiba saja dah stage 4, dah terlambat. So you boleh anggap stage 4 cancer tu macam brittle. Tiba-tiba saja dah dapat tahu pun dah severe, dah tak boleh selamat. Tetapi kalau macam you uh, yang demam pula, you boleh anggap macam reinforce concrete. Sebab sebelum you nak demam teruk, You dah ada simptom badan you panas, you pening kepala, you muntah-muntah. And then you baru tahu, eh aku sakit eh, aku kena pergi jumpa doktor. So the same thing here. So you nampak tak analogi saya ni supaya you faham perbezaan kalau you gunakan concrete only and kalau you gunakan concrete and steel. Beza dia macam mana? Boleh faham tak? Ada apa persoalan tak setakat ni? Atau masih tak faham lagi? Nampak uh, kita macam kontrol dia punya failure ke rasa? Ya, yeah, kita nak kontrol failure supaya kita selamat. Ingat tak tadi bila saya cerita tentang dokumen, kita ada EC0. Ingat tadi EC0? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Kan you kat, saya beritahu tadi, dalam EC0, you are required to design the structure berdasarkan tiga cerita. Cerita pertama adalah safety. Adakah sekarang ni saya buat benda ni untuk safety atau tidak? Adakah dengan combine steel dengan kopi memberikan safety atau tidak? Saya tanya pada you. Safety ada. Ha, jadi maksud you fulfill tak requirement EC0? Fulfill kan? Ya. Yeah. Sebab itu sebab itu saya kata bila you nak design, you kena tahu kriteria yang you nak design. Sekarang ni saya telah memenuhi kehendak keselamatan. Sebab bila you set a combine steel dengan concrete, dia lebih selamat. Maksudnya sebelum dia gagal, you sudah nampak tanda-tanda dia nak gagal. Jadi, memudahkan pengurusan bangunan mengarahkan people evacuate the building at sufficient time sebelum roboh. Faham tak? Baru satu aspek tau. Ada dua lagi aspek yang kita cerita. Iaitu apa tadi? Durability. Satu lagi apa? Servicity. Yang itu dua lagi belum lagi cerita. Sekarang ni baru saya comply yang pertama je. Safety dulu. Okay, faham eh? So nanti bila dalam exam dia tanya, what is the differences between brittle failure and ductile failure? Sepatutnya boleh cerita. Okay. 
बोले ओके ओके नाउ आफ्टर यू नो अ बिट अबाउट फेलियर ऑफ कंक्रीट एंड फेलियर ऑफ स्टील यू नीड टू नो द डेफिनेशन ऑफ डिजाइन apa benda design ni ataupun dalam bahasa Melayu lah reka bentuk selalu dengar kan reka bentuk reka bentuk in english we call it as design so what is the meaning of design design is only a process where you put your effort to properly select the material types and also to select the element sizes that you need to use for your structure dia satu proses di mana you menggunakan kemahiran mathematics you, kemahiran uh, solid mechanics you, kemahiran apa lagi, structure analysis you, supaya membantu memilih bahan yang sesuai dan juga size elemen yang sesuai kepada struktur yang you nak bangunkan. And in order to do that, nak memilih bahan dan memilih size, you need to know what are the loadings acting on the structure. Sebabnya, makin banyak beban, makin banyak loading bertindak pada structure, sudah so tentu dia punya dia punya design lain. Eh? Kalau structure itu katakan uh, tempat itu diduduki oleh manusia, katakan lantai itu guna untuk dudukkan manusia, dengan lantai yang kita gunakan untuk letak gajah sudah tentu lantai yang letak gajah lebih berat dan saiz dia berbeza dengan lantai yang diletakkan manusia betul tak sebab gajah lebih berat manusia tapi tak tahulah kalau ada manusia seberat gajah saya tak pastilah kan normally manusia kurang berat dari gajah so to determine the, the material and the size is greatly depending on the loads and to know what are the loads acting on the structure you need ec1 u root 1 yang saya tunjuk tadi u root 1 mana tadi ah ni u root 1 action on structures ataupun loading on structures because this u root 1 will give you the the magnitude of the loads that you should select to design your structures. Okay. Boleh? Tahu faham tentang ni? Tentang design definition? Faham, sir. Okay. The other objective of design, macam hidup kita lah. Dalam hidup kita mesti ada matlamat. The same thing goes to design. Design pun ada matlamat dia. Sudah tentu you design for safety. Kan? Takkan dah design untuk tak safety kan? Mana ada orang nak beli bangunan kalau tak selamat? Sudah tentu pereka bentuk dia, the designer, must ensure that the building is safe. So that's why it will be one objective of the design. Okay? And it must also to design so that it can fulfill its purpose. So contohnya, if they say you design Uh, contohnya apa eh, kita nak angkat mm, you design a column let's say you design a column let's say you design a column so column usually tiang eh? tiang column usually uh, to resist compression force okay so you must ensure that under this compression force this structure can carry the loads so maksudnya it fulfill its purpose purpose of column is to transfer compression force so untuk design kena pastikan kereta ni boleh transfer that axial compression force and you must also ensure that the structure is strong strong maksudnya apa strong meaning that the structure has sufficient stiffness to resist the load So maksudnya macam mana? Maksudnya macam ni. Mana saya punya pen ni? Tadi macam ada. Oh, okay. Let's say you have a column lagi. Eh, kenapa tak keluar pen ni? Baik. 
Sekejap eh. Ah, baru nak keluar. If let's say you design a column. Which resists compression force. So you must ensure that when you apply the force, this surface does not damage. Maksudnya strong. Eh? Kita tak nanti bila you apply the load, suddenly you have a damage happen to your surface. Ah, tak nak jadi macam ni. Dia berlubang tiba-tiba kan? Dia tak mau. Kita nak dia intact. Ah, macam ni kita tak benar lah. Tiba-tiba jadi lubang ni. Tak boleh. So you must ensure it's very strong. Also, you want to ensure that the structure does not buckle. Eh? If let's say you have a, a a column, when you apply the load, suddenly it buckle. Ah, yang ni tak boleh lah. Dia melendut, eh? dia melengkuk. Ah, ini maksudnya structure ni tak strong. So, so you have to design to ensure that it is very strong. Okay. Yeah, the last one is economic. Eh? Meaning that your your structure is not only safe, not only strong, but also very economic in terms of construction costs and also in terms of time of construction. Kita tak nak lah ada structure yang terlalu kuat tetapi mengambil masa sampai 100 tahun untuk dibina. Sebab makin lama you bina, makin banyak duit keluar. Eh? Ataupun structure tu terlalu kukuh tapi you gunakan bahan yang terlalu mahal. Tak boleh lah. Kita nak selamat, fulfill it purpose, strong, tapi menjimatkan kos lah. Sebab ini penting eh, as a designer, you must understand your rules when you design, you you prepare the design. So biasanya inilah empat perkara yang you akan consider lah when you design. Eh, maksudnya kita tak boleh sesuka hati design, kita kena design ada tujuan. So maksudnya bila you nak design, you kena tanya, you be client, uh, boss, ini projek berapa juta bos? Ini projek 2 juta. So you janganlah design sampai 50 juta. Tak boleh lah. Habis poket orang tu. You kena tahu the budget. Eh? So maksudnya it's not only safe, it's not only fulfill the purpose strong, tetapi ekonomi pun penting. Eh? Okay, boleh Okey ni. Belum pukul 12 hari. Senyap ni semua ni. Ha, mesti soal seorang tu dah jawab kan. Cik Musam ni lain jawab kan. Yang lain ni macam mana? Senyap eh. Boleh eh. Okey. Kita sambung lagi. Kita ada setengah jam lagi insyaAllah. Ada lagi. Okey. Okey. For designing building. Sebab you punya project more on building. Kita takkan buat benda yang bukan building. Kita takkan design jambatan. Kita takkan design empangan. Kita tidak akan design retaining wall. Tak. Kita akan design building saja. So when we talk about building, you have to know this member's element. You have to know where is the roof section. What is called as slab structure. What is called as beam structure. Column, foundation and wall. Cuma untuk wall ni, wall ni bukan structure. Eh. Dia bukan structure. Structure adalah slab, beam, column and foundation. Wall is not a structure. Tapi you kena tahulah dinding tu apalah. And kalau tak tahu dinding kan macam masalah juga kan. Okay. So this is a roof. I think most of you know about roof. If, uh, especially if you live in in the town area. You can see even the the rumah kampung ada roof kan. So the roof is very important to resist uh, the the rain ataupun the, uh, the the climate changes eh? because you you your apa kita akan terdedah kepada uh, hari panas dan hari hujan so you need to shelter your skin from uh, from being touched by the sun sunlight and also from the rain drops eh? so you need a roof uh, punya section to perform that purpose eh? And on roof also you have a beam. You boleh nampak sini. Saya, saya ada gariskan dengan saya pimpin ni. Inilah you punya uh, sebenarnya drainage. Eh? Tapi boleh juga you letak beam kat sini. Eh? Dan sini pun boleh letak beam. Eh? Eh? 
So the purpose of that beam is to transfer the load from the roof lah. Okay, slab dalam bahasa Melayu adalah lantai. Okay, you can see that on the left side picture is the is the apa ni? Uh, the construction of the slab where you may see the the steel reinforcement is put on on the slab. You boleh nampak kat situ eh. Uh, reinforcement tu pun dah nampak macam berkarat eh. Sepatutnya tak boleh eh. Tapi itulah industri kita tidak menghalang benda itu berlaku. Sepatutnya you must use a very good uh, reinforcement lah. Tetapi dia orang pakai juga. And after you have put your uh, reinforcement, you must use this kind of, you boleh nampak eh. That we call as concrete spacer eh. Concrete spacer. So apa tujuan concrete spacer ni? Saya akan tunjukkan sekejap lagi, saya lukis. Apa dengan concrete spacer? Ada beta tau. So. Nanti saya tunjukkan apa beza dia. Okay, if let's say this is your slab tadi lah, 3D. Eh? You will put your reinforcement macam ni, maybe. Eh? This is where you put your reinforcement lah. You akan nampak besi kat sini kan? Eh? Ada banyak besi lah. So, to ensure that your concrete section does not uh, touch the environment, you need a space here. Nampak ni ada satu space kat sini. Eh? Dia ada ruang kat situ yang kita namakan sebagai cover. Eh? Maksudnya kalau saya zoom kawasan ni, if I zoom, you akan nampak ini you punya besi. Eh? Ni, ini you punya besi. Ni, ini besi you. Okay, sorry lah, tak, tak cantik tu. Okay. Jarak daripada sini, the distance from here to here, we call it as cover. And this cover is depending on EC2 concrete coat. Eh? So, macam mana you nak pastikan you punya besi ni, betul-betul cover dia sama. Eh? That's why in construction, terpaksa lah you letak you punya besi tu di atas concrete spacer. Ni. Eh? Yang mana you ikat ni, supaya jarak ini sama dengan jarak ini. Jadi maksudnya bila you tuang concrete nanti, you akan dapatlah uh, cover ni. Itulah beza concrete spacer. Ha, ini concrete spacer eh, dengan cover. Ini maksudnya concrete spacer. Tujuan concrete spacer is to ensure that you can get enough cover after you pour your concrete. Boleh eh? Faham ke? Ataupun faham ke tak faham ni? Boleh je. Okay. okay. Kita pergi balik tadi gambar tadi. Okay. So after uh, you have put your concrete spacer and rebar. So you nampak eh. Dekat rebar saja akan ada concrete spacer tau. Tempat yang tak ada rebar takkan ada concrete spacer. You nampak eh. Dekat tempat pelik lubang kan. Mana ada concrete spacer. Concrete spacer kena letak di bawah besi. Nampak ni? Diikat. Sebab you, you nak pastikan besi tu terapung kan. Mestilah you ikat dengan besi. So after you put your concrete spacer and reinforcement. Then you can pour your cement. Uh, to fill up the void of your uh, slab. And after it hardens. Uh, biasanya 5 days. You can take out the, the formworks. And after that you will uh, continue to put some kind of. Apa ni? Curing. Curing biasa digunakan uh, gani set, guni basah. Guni basah tu dia akan letak dekat atas uh, slab tu ataupun kadang-kadang you siram dengan air until 28 days lah. And after 28 days, then you can katakan uh, dia dah mengeras. Eh? The concrete has hardened after 28 days. So before 28 days tu, you kena letak air lah pada, pada permukaan concrete to make sure that the concrete have sufficient amount of water lah. Eh? Okay. And this is that we call as beam. Eh? Beam. You boleh nampak ni. Ini beam. Eh? Allah. Kejap. Saya punya ni. Pen tak keluar. Dia punya pointer. Ha, ini beam. Eh? Ha, ini beam. Ha, ini semua beam. Eh? You boleh nampak ni. This is beam. Eh? Yang ini column. Eh? Ini column. Ha, yang ini beam. Eh? So this is the hardened beam on the left side. And before it's being hardened to to create the uh, the beam. You have to construct the reinforcement. Apa ni? You are the top reinforcement. 
and bottom reinforcement and you have also shear link nampak ni you are the shear link you are the shear link so after you uh, prepare that uh, reinforcement uh, cage and you can put your cement inside the formwork and after it's hardened 28 days then you can take uh, you can uh, take out atau rip off uh, you punya formwork and you can get the hardened part of your beam lah okay okay boleh Ada problem tak ni? Okay, you nampak kat sini eh. Function of beam is to carry loads from slabs, from roof, from ceiling. Apa maksudnya ni? Okay, saya nak tunjuk gambar dia. Kalau tidak nanti tak faham tu. Okay. What is the function of beam? So, saya lukis lah. Eh. Saya lukis lah bangunan. Taklah kata pandai lukis. Lebih kurang macam ni lah. This is your building eh. This is your roof level. This is your first floor. Katakan yang ni ground eh. Yang ni katakan tanah eh. And this is your ground. Ground level eh. Okay. This is that we call as slab eh. This is you punya slab. So on slab, basically, we will have people that using the slabs. And then maybe you put your computers, you can put your tables and so on, that will resting on slabs. So if I take, say zoom, eh, Kawasan slab, eh, and if I take out, okay, that is a slab. In actual, that slab, you have a beam. Dekat ujung tu sepatut ada beam, eh. Nampak, eh? And that beam, kalau slab tu saya lukis 3D, beam tu akan macam tu. Eh? This is your beam. So the load that is acting on the slab, contohnya macam orang, macam printer, dapur, apa benda lah, will transfer from the slab tetapi dia akan pergi kepada beam. Nampak? Load ni akan pergi kepada beam. Sebab itu tadi, to carry load from slabs. Nampak ni? The function of the beam is to carry loads from slabs. Seperti yang saya tunjukkan ni. Berat badan you akan duduk atas slab, tetapi berat badan you akan transfer daripada slab to the beam. So when I draw the free body diagram of the beam, That is your beam, simply supported. The load will be in terms of UDL. UDL ni datang daripada mana? Daripada berat badan diri you, daripada dapur, daripada printer, daripada apa-apa benda lah. Berat anak you ke, berat adik you ke, whatever thing that is lies on the slab will be transferred as a UDL to your beam. So faham tak maksud yang saya cakap ni? The function of the beam is to carry load from the slab. Bagaimana pula tentang shilling ni? So shilling macam ni pula. Eh. So sudah tentu kalau orang yang duduk di bawah ini, kalau ada orang di bawah ni, for sure kalau dia mendongak ke atas, dia akan nampak shilling, betul tak? Daripada bawah, kalau kata sekarang dia kat dalam bilik kan, kalau dia dongak ke atas, mesti dia nampak shilling dekat atas kan, betul tak? Tak tahulah kalau you dongak nampak langit, mungkin bumbung ni terbuka lah kan. Saya tak tahulah. For sure, you punya bumbung tertutup. That is shilling. So remember that there is a shilling attached to this lab. Eh? Ada shilling ni, ada shilling. So kalau saya lukis yang baru, eh, gambar ni pun dah, ter dah teruk. Eh. Saya akan lukis yang baru. So let's say this is your slab. Ini bilik you eh. You duduk dekat sini. You pandang kata you nampak shilling. So this shilling usually dia akan hang you punya shilling dengan certain uh, rope atau certain uh, steel yang kecil. Dia akan pegang shilling. This is you punya shilling. So shilling having loads. 
So this load will be transferred to the slab. Dan slab ni, seperti saya cakap tadi, dia ada beam di hujung. Kalau saya beli, dia ada beam di hujung. So beam ini akan dapat load daripada slab. Daripada slab. Dan juga daripada shilling yang ada. So sebab itu, you kena faham function beam tu. Dia akan transfer load from the slab and shilling. Saya tak nak cerita pasal roof ni sangat. Nanti dulu. Kemudian, saya nak you faham tentang slab and shilling tu dulu. That is the function kenapa kena ada beam. Function kenapa ada slab sebab nak carry you punya berat. Eh? Sebab you nak letak meja atas you punya lantai. Apa lagi? You nak ada dapur letak atas lantai. Tu function slab. It carries a lot of loads eh? yang you nak of, uh, of for your building. So beam pula function eh, untuk transfer load daripada slab dan juga shilling. Okay. Ada ada persoalan tak tentang ni? Dua benda ni. Slab dengan beam. Transfer ke mana tu? Tak, tak dengar lah. Suara you halus sangat. Besar, besar dengan suara sikit. Uh, trust. Apa dia? Load daripada trust. Load daripada trust letak uh, sama apa di di agihkan oleh oleh roof. Kalau nak lukis boleh. Tak ada masalah. Sekejap. Saya buat yang baru punya. Okay. Let's say this is your roof. Okay. Dan roof you mesti ada atap genting atap lah ni eh dan untuk nak sokong atap genting ni you mesti ada truss kalau tidak nanti macam mana hubung kan and your truss must be sit down on certain roof beam di hujung and then baru transfer kepada column and then you ada slab and then transfer kepada column dan pergi kepada tanah so this roof beam will carry the load from the truss. Sebab truss ni kalau you buat UDL, eh, sebab you buat UDL lah. Kalau you lukis ni free body diagram, you akan dapat macam ni. Nah, you akan dapat reactions. Nampak ni? Sebab you akan ada load pada truss. Ah, ni saya dah masuk advance ni eh. So when you analyze your roof truss, kalau you masih ingat lagi, you belajar pasal method of sections, method of joints. Mana belajar kan? Truss. You, you kena kira reaction ni berapa? And this reaction, katakan nilai dia R, will be transferred to the beam ni. Beam ni, yang saya lukis ni, ni, akan pergi kepada beam. And this is beam yang kita namakan sebagai roof beam. Biasanya dibuat daripada concrete lah. So that's how the load is transferred from truss kepada roof beam. You boleh nampak tak kat sini? Sebab itu, soalan exam you ataupun final, ataupun test, Berdasarkan drawing. Jadi you kena faham membaca drawing. Sebelum you nak design. So you nampak tak? So, dia buat you makin lagi complicated tau. You kena memahami drawing. Kalau you baca drawing pun tak pandai. Macam mana you nak design? Itu yang buat 60% fail tau. Okay boleh tak saya menjawab soalan tadi? Roof beam daripada trust. Boleh eh? Ha, itu penerangan untuk roof lah. Ha, yang tu lah. Maksud kawan you tadi bantu saya macam nak jawab untuk soalan untuk roof. Saya dah jawab lah. And untuk roof. Dia akan tampung trust punya width eh. Okay. And the next part element is called as column. Column ni to transfer the loads from beam and slab lah. Eh? Uh, vertical ni eh? to To transfer vertical loads eh. Vertical load from slab and beams. So, kolom boleh jadi segi empat, boleh jadi circular. It depends on the architect. Lah, eh? Okay, and foundation. So, foundation is a structure. Yang ni gambar ni patut saya kena padam ni. Sebab yang ini, okay, saya padam. Okay, baru you nampak. So, uh, foundation is a structure that you use and you design uh, to transfer the loads from your kolom. So that the load can be dispersed. Eh? Dispersed dalam masa-masa diserakkan. Ataupun disebarkan. To the soil effectively. So that there is no. Uh, no apa ni? No significant settlement. Sebab kalau kita tak ada foundation ni. Eh, contoh ah, ni foundation ni. Saya pakai highlighter. Eh? So kalau nampak tak. Ini, ini you punya footing. Eh? 
kalau tak ada footing ni yang cukup besar you punya load datang pada kolam tu akan menyebabkan bangunan tu akan terenap eh terenap in english asalnya settle eh settlement so you kena design lah berapa besar you punya footing eh, so that the load can be effectively dispersed to the soil uh, so that there is no significant settlement eh. so benda ni biasa ditanam dalam tanah pada kedalaman lebih kurang 1 meter 1 meter minimum eh. minimum 1 meter lah depending on the soil report paling da, paling minima 1 meter uh, kedalaman sebenar will be depending determined by the uh, site supervisor based on the soil reports yeah? and inside this uh, apa ni footing you must put reinforcement eh, before you pour the concrete dan bentuknya biasa segi empat lah tak pernah saya tengok bentuk yang bukan-bukan eh. biasa segi empat ataupun uh, rectangular square or rectangular sections Okay, ada soalan tak setakat ni untuk foundation? Okay, ni yang bangunan yang dah siap lah eh. Cuma saya tak berapa setuju yang beam ni sebab tak nampak sangat beam kat tu. So you can see that the structure of the column. Eh, column, column eh. And you can see a bit of slab there. Ada slab kat situ. Sekejap eh, saya, saya rasa saya nak padam ni. Ah, So you nampak ada, ada cantilever slab kat sini ada macam cantilever slab dia macam terjui eh uh, untuk biasa kegunaan untuk untuk apa untuk aircon eh so kalau saya lukis sikit if you see this is your building biasanya kalau kat sekolah you nampak dia ada macam koridor sikit tepi tu eh eh so dia this is like a cantilever slab lah a cantilever slab kat koridor lah biasanya. Eh? So kalau benda ni uh, tidak ada parapet wall, uh, dia jadi, kalau tak ada parapet wall, maksudnya you boleh letak aircon kat sini lah. Tapi kalau ada parapet wall, parapet wall apa, dinding supaya budak-budak tak jatuh ke bawah kat sekolah, dia jadi koridor lah. Kan? Takkan you tengok kat sekolah, adik you, koridor dia boleh jatuh ke bawah kan? Tak boleh kan? Dia mesti ada parapet wall kat sini. Dia mesti ada wall So this lab kita panggil sebagai cantilever slab eh, yang you nampak gambar dekat mana tadi. Ah ni eh dia ada macam terjuih sedikit eh cantilever slab eh. Yang beam ni saya tak setuju sangat gambar dia eh. saya rasa tak nampak sangat beam eh. Beam you biasa nampak dekat dekat sini eh dekat dekat sini. Dekat dekat sini eh. This is beam eh beam eh you tak nampak sangat eh dia ada beam kat sini. Ah ni beam. This is beam. Beam eh This is also beam. Uh, you tak nampak sebab apa? Sebab dia flush dengan uh, dinding punya tebal. Eh. Ha, tapi kalau slab dengan kolam memang jelas nampak. Kat, kalau kat bilik you pun boleh nampak beam. Kalau you dongak ke atas, you nampak lantai ke atas tu ada beam. Dekat keempat-empat uh, penjuru slab tu. Eh. Okay. So saya rasa saya akan sambung yang the rest of this inside another lecture. Bila? Hari Kamis kan? Hari Kamis esok petang ke pagi? Saya pun tak ingat. So kita akan cover benda ini uh, in the next lecture. Yeah. So ada apa soalan tak setakat ni? So I will download you your attendance here. But remember, you have also to verify your attendance in your future. Nampak ni, I can download your attendance. So I can know where you, uh, what is the time that you log in and when you log out. Yeah. So saya akan download selepas you log out. Eh. Sekejap lagi. Jangan lupa, tick also your future attendance. Ada soalan tak? Before we leave or before we stop our sessions? Is there any questions? So jangan lupa tentang diagnostic test eh. Diagnostic test ada eh. So saya tunjuk sekejap je. Dekat dalam MS Team you. You boleh tengok dekat uh, group C lah. Ha uh, ini group C. Ha uh, nampak ni dekat sini saya bagi tahu. Please download and answer all the test question. So dekat sini you boleh tengoklah apa dia punya arahan lah. Eh you boleh tengok sendiri. 
you boleh download and then you can submit ah ni you punya uh, link untuk download and this is where you can submit your solution eh so i think that's all from me see you again tomorrow morning or evening eh assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you sir welcome thank you sir thank you sir